All right, here we go again. Good evening, everybody. He's a fag. Do you see that guy? He's gay. Oh, is he gay or is he not gay? You are not a man. You're a wuss. This um, attack differentiation has been happening in human history since the beginning of time. It seems to be very important for men, rightly so, um, as you could say we have built civilization and we need to organize ourselves and lead and the species um, has evolved us to lead and build um, civilization and of course through our genes and through inner breeding we share equality with women we whatever we become women become in their own version the same thing but in particular for men it's very important to know whether that guy is going to be able to handle the job or not i'm talking about something that's very profoundly embedded in our psyche since the beginning of uh, our evolution and so to discern that and to be angry at the disappointment and everything that would relate to somebody not being able to uh, not cutting the not being able to cut the job has become part of um, a discernment and culture and colloquial society now the truth is that our sexuality human sexuality has no such um, being distinguished differentiated being as by nature or evolution's intent there is no such thing as somebody who's not a man is more like a woman that looks like a man or vice versa a woman that looks like a woman but she's really a man that's does not exist in nature <laughs> Uh, but socially, our social prowess and our conscious uh, needs expressed in our, our cultural speeches, speech and um, society has created that um, as so many other things that we've created in society. Uh, as ideas not necessarily reflecting what nature's intent was for example nature certainly did not intend for us to kill our own offspring yet we invented armies and weapons and we bomb cities and kill our own offspring so there is the separation of uh, the conceptual separation of what nature uh, has made and has who's uh, what, it's a per what is its purpose is and then man's world mankind's human beings uh, humankind's world and all the stuff that we've invented and created and idealisms that we have given form and logic and reason to okay I confess I am absolutely fascinated I am fascinated with the subject of homosexuality and I'm fascinated because I understand it so well I have come to explore it for years and years always turning and turning and I have come to see it so broadly understood um, that I um, I'm not lying when I say I have not heard or read or seen anybody that is able to explain what I have conceptually come to understand which is not something huge it's actually easy and natural 
but for various reasons we have been it has been very difficult to uh, stick our hands inside this very intense area uh, basically humanity to me the way I see it is humanity has always seen the tip of an iceberg and uh, lo and behold I have seen this enormous I, I come to understand or seen with my own eyes sort of say this uh, part underneath the water that's full of caverns and things that people didn't even imagine and even the most um, advanced people that have have indeed started saying no there are caverns down there that it's not what you see above the water and as soon as they started to talk about this um, our modern day society has shut them up has silenced them and we have turned it into a popularly held notion that it's a civil matter particularly led by our American culture we have pretty much exported this movement to the rest of the world and met up with parts of the world that have not bought it yet but they're still stuck in something that is older and therefore not as advanced except that our advancement is, advancement is bringing um, a higher level of error <laughs> that sounds the alarm in these um, more traditional cultures and they 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 don't accept it because indeed we are off very off though we contain a lot of more uh, a lot of civilized notions with it that have solved some situations but in the end word the end um, definition of it we have still miss the mark and so because we are still missing the mark uh, these older traditional more brutal let's say uh, societies are not recognizing what we say even though we come with a lot of positive things like don't harm yourselves over this <laughs> it's just something that has to do with the species it does have to do with with the species but everything is understandable actually everything mankind man civil, civilization has um, felt and done and reacted about it has a reason um, there is no evolution we're going away from something to turn it into something more advanced that's just something we came up with it's not what is happening there's uh, all of it is true and we are now we have now created a sort of battle of sides of, of either or which is not the case at all so it's a little hard to um, start somewhere anywhere when it's just there's just so many places that people are coming at it from different directions and always end up in going the wrong way so what I was thinking about earlier and which is uh, came up because I was again you know uh, arguing uh, with some some people on YouTube um, over basically understanding logic critical thinking um, that's how I see it people of course respond at me they don't see that I'm doing a, a critical analysis of meaning of significant of, of uh, definition definitions they think that I have hate or that I'm anti-gay or these kind of cliche almost uh, accusations because they really are they are unequipped they really don't know they know very few people in general in our society know very few approaches or um, um, very few how can I say this uh, lines of reasoning regarding there's these uh, uh, formatted almost idealist civil rights kind of um, notions, uh, ideas of, of principles, of, 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 of value and principles regarding why they believe what they do. And they're very small in reality. Uh, if you question them, they immediately act up like a sea urchin. They go, what are you trying to do to me? You're trying, you know, <laughs> um, um, bring down everything that we work so hard at establishing because this is significant we have finally come to 
you know and in reality <laughs> we're all like scattered like 2001 space odyssey you know with our boxes flying in space completely sure that this is what needs to be done and no never has humanity ever really um owned its own uh homosexuality in the context of its sexuality of our own sexuality comprising its homosexuality as part of it never have we had um a universal understanding <laughs> of homosexuality as we do about everything else that our body does um, it is strongly tied to god um, anything that has to do with uh, to especially today more than before which is ironic anything you would have to do with uh, you know reparative or recovery or or not wanting homosexuality or leaving homosexual what have you abandoning or changing your mind or however you want to put it um finds its um its shelter and in, in, in god like you know there is no more uh um secular uh there's somebody that had a secular group and uh, uh and and then when you go to talk to people they you either hear people that are of the gay community you know getting angry and saying you haters you haters or you have people that uh don't don't know any other way to preserve their choice and to say uh to say, make religious or spiritual re religious um responses uh so there is no in part uh, a big part of this is that the united states has decided that because the psychiatric community stopped calling it a disease which it isn't it is not a disease they're right they are not right for the right reasons <laughs> or if in other words they hit it on half the nail it's true it's not a disease it's something that nature does for a reason though it's something that nature compensates so this is where the difficulty starts homosexuality is in a category by itself it has it's all of it is characterized by half definitions all of it is if you want to explain it it's well not exactly a disease it's something that uh lacked you lacked uh it's because of a uh, lack of nurturing in these areas when the person was growing up developing whether it was in the fetus or whether it was psychologically as a child um and so nature didn't really develop that part of you that says i know what i am and that is what i have to go for which is what everybody evolves what what evolution made everybody develop like um, and it's very difficult today to talk about these things because no matter how graceful you are with being scientifically unemotional and non-agenda at all because it's been set up to a, a polar a polar field of, of of fighting and oppositions immediately you become people want to see you getting tricked into saying the wrong thing and immediately make you accuse you of sounding see you're saying that it's a, there's it's a problem <laughs> and because generally uh understood by um the advocates of uh, of homosexual living and i even have a hard time talking about it because i've already acquired my own sort of set of language and vocabulary so i don't say for example somebody is gay i don't say that because i've already gone into an area of of reasoning that understands homosexuality so largely differently that i no longer can say uh, sentences put together a certain way like calling somebody gay because there aren't people that are are gay um and so what I'm going to try to do <laughs> with this video is uh, is hit on a few things that are about the fundamental premise of logic. In other words, for you to say that or for you to state that, you would have to believe that things are set up this way or that way. I don't know what this is called in critical reasoning or whatever, 
but I know the importance of certain notions and I know that if you understand that you won't be saying this down the line of reasoning so one of these things is that it's only it's so simple to me I studied architecture so I can almost see it visually as a as a three-dimensional um, easy to understand space to move in uh, but it isn't it is very difficult to talk about this in today's society which is has been a, a, a almost a militant campaign to rigorously um, turn it a certain way and have it be have it become and be defined in all these few uh, ways and so to talk you find it's like walking in a minefield but so I'm just going to hit on these notions and one of them is that you might say you might it might sound like duh I could have thought of that well yeah but what people don't realize is that if you really understood and believed that you wouldn't be saying things you wouldn't be structuring sentences and saying talking about people uh, people that have to do with homosexuality with that kind of um, grammatical construction <laughs> that you say it that way means that you must believe that people are for example born gay or not born gay and so some of these are complete a lot of people will say yeah well that is because I believe that some people are born gay or not gay but others don't make the whole um, trajectory some people just say things because they're what what is supposed to support and sustain what they believe in and they hear over and over and over people say and but they're not they're not realizing that maybe they will agree with you fixing or tweaking something so they can understand it better or more intelligently and they may agree with you but they're not seeing that that means that they would have to think about this other aspect at the base of it upside down inverted 180 degrees different they don't make that connection but I'm only going to hit on some of these <clears throat> because otherwise I could be here for hours and I don't even know where I don't ever have a plan of where I'm going with this um, and I'm not studied I'm not an academic I can't like write a paper although I, I know that I cover things that are you know so elaborated in academic papers by psychologists and stuff and yeah and I'm like yeah that's what I'm that's basically what I have come to understand but this guy is totally off he doesn't see this other part and he's a total professor you know I'm a major in psychology renowned in Germany and I can see that he hasn't included so anyways just uh, <laughs> how they say in Spanish what the card that I got in life you know this is just basically it so I'm gonna continue and just um, put lay down a few of the things for one thing one big mistake that we've made in the States and this is more immediate we can all kind of talk about this and get in the argument because it's contemporary and it's uh, they are uh, short you know um, reachable um, uh, points and it is that homosexuality is part it's a, it's an expression a possibility a plausible expression of human sexuality and that basically means anybody can know homosexuality the same way anybody else can they can have the lust the pleasure the fear the insecurity the desire the the covetous kind of I want to do it but I don't want others to know that I, that's what I want um, the the orgasmic kind of uh, pleasure the love you know the, the, the surrender with that person uh, everything anything that you can experience through homosexuality anybody is capable of experiencing now the reason they don't has to do with a lot that some don't has to do with a lot of factors a lot of different factors at different levels for some it may be very very hard for some it may be blocked you know that there's just so much that they would never allow themselves and there's also a natural part that that's what I'm going to talk about a little, in a little bit which is some people really could experience all the pleasure all the orgasm all the lust and desire 
but they're not so driven to maybe try it again after they somebody you know whatever gave them, gave them a drug or something or or they found the right person and they were happy and they got drunk and they ended up doing it and whoa wouldn't you know that they're not naturally conducive to want to to feel so satisfied by it than other people now this difference is something that yes happens through development but it is important to understand that we're all born pretty much the same we're not all born we're not some born destined to go towards homosexuality and then like there's a fork in the road some are not which is what society believes today and this error and believing that some people must be optimally more completed by homosexuality versus others that cannot at all is creating <laughs> havoc is creating a lot of problems in in the law and how we think and how we make friends how we think of people and it's just it's a disaster because we made a grave mistake in america in the 50s i'm gonna say before the 50s i don't know when the first psychologist uh occurred uh who said, wait a second, if I'm understanding Freud probably, or whoever Freud learned from maybe was the first one to think of that concept, um, it seems that I'm finding common denominators. There's this guy that is flamboyant, that wants to have this sweet, he's, he's always trying to reach out to guys, and da, 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 da. he's outwardly gay, whatever, and I see these common denominators. I see the father a certain way, the mother a certain way, and the discovery that there is a psychological component to homosexual development came to civilization we may have had it before intuitively we were actually a lot wiser uh, in ancient times about a father knowing that a boy needed to be with boys to develop some stuff you know that happens to boys <laughs> and if he hangs around with women too much or, or if he's too soft and he doesn't learn to fight for himself and confront a tough situation it's you know he's never going to get on his feet like a like a doe you know like a deer that if he doesn't get up right away and run with the with the flock with the <laughs> the herd um he's going to have problems walking well this sort of level was always intuitively with us but very um n not known not understood scientifically we discovered in the 50s I say the 50s because it's more when the Freud come about was at the beginning of the century right uh, excuse my ignorance but I don't know I say generally the 50s because that's when it, it maybe came back to the academic field I, Freud is older now I gotta stop this and look see what year Freud was in because I don't want to be so far off right okay so yeah this theory of sexuality was 18 1922 yeah 1922 so until it became an, a, another explosion into literature I have read people in Germany uh, English uh, psychologists were starting to write so uh, our sciences discovered that there was a, a big um, component but the thing is it didn't a uh, psychological component it kind of stop there and the mistake of psychology i know this is going to sound <laughs> i don't care i'm just going to say it anyways whoever sees that i'm you know that i make sense will see that i make sense whoever wants to think that i'm shooting out of my armpit can think that it doesn't matter because what matters is that two people understand each other three and four and if that doesn't happen um the the most the brightest person in the world can tell you how to reach a nebula and back in a day and it won't matter because two or three or more people didn't make it part of society and reality so that's my theory that's my philosophy rather so the problem with psychology's understanding and I, I haven't even gotten to 1970s in Christopher Street which is really where I'm heading with this but I'm just gonna say this first um, is that um, psychology understood that something happened with the mother and the father and then the, how you, the little boy or the little girl got along with their peers and if stuff wasn't getting nurtured you know but that 
they kind of, as usual, as usual, uh, psycho usually psychology does, it rushes to create the, the pathology and the ability to diagnose and call it all these fancy names. And it never realized that if homosexuality sort of, I see it like the appendix, you know, it's there, latent, you can stimulate it and it tickles, but, you know, if stuff happens to it during development, and I'm including prenatal development, um, um, also, uh, stuff happens to it, it, it can infl infl inflate, and then all of a sudden it wants blood, it wants, you know, it wants to uh, oxygenate because it's now been inflated and they remove it, but we don't have to remove homosexuality because it's there for a reason. Um, and so it is natural. So a lot of my, if people have patients, they'll, they'll see that I actually don't negate anything. I say everything and sometimes in different tones, in different ways that both quote unquote sides are saying. And it's sort of like a, a unifying theorem of, of homosexuality that it completely unites it into a, an apex. And per, perhaps the one only thing that is decisively has maybe uh, a leap of faith for some is to conclude that it is not the optimal expression of a sexual life the person would want for himself if both would be equally plausible by scientific capacity or by one's will or by the chance of fate and life um it, it you know you're more com more fully yourself if you also are yourself by your anatomical gender but it doesn't mean it's the end of the world that you live homosexually it does there's just so many a universe of worse things that can happen so that's basically where I where the whole joining of both ends both um, extremes of the <laughs> yay or nay <laughs> polarity division here ends with one thing it has to everything in order in the universe and, uh, anyways but um, for it to for then ultimately what the what the um, the finalized sort of uh, established understand uh, suggested or um, not recommended I can't think of a word to say what would sit best with humanity as its final understanding uh, to be possible needs to have uh, not a place of division not a place of either or not a place of some yes and some no um, and not that it is equal, which is kind of what is being forced right now. You know, we are saying it's absolutely the same. It doesn't make any difference at all. And sexuality is being so, it is so important to the human essence and how people feel about themselves and how they relate to others and, and how they f relate to what their life has been and and how others are see them and how you pick up and what happens between picking up what others feel about you and how you respond and it's so essential um, <laughs> to ourselves that it's unbelievable that we have needed to become so banal so um, so sportsmanship so sports like about sexuality so almost insolent we don't care anymore what you know we just go nip it off shape it differently turn into make yourself a giraffe if you want to you know how can we have gotten this way when when sexuality is so uh it's our guiding it's what's carrying us through 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 the universe through space through the cosmos and evolution it's the the you know it's the quality of how we are born and developed and are conceived will determine if you want to make a tree the healthiest it can be you will go to the moment the seed is created and start nurturing it there not when it's popped through the ground or anything but 
if you're a fanatic, a real zealous scientist, and you want perfection and optimal expression of that tree, the seed is where you want to make sure everything is perfect, right? So sexu our sexuality is, is um, it's amazing how our, our society, and, and this has happened because we have decided we don't want to think about it, we don't want to care if we're wrong or right anymore, and we're just going to call it this, so we end up all... We quash and finalize all these problems that it's causing, mainly violence and cruelty and segregation, you know, and um, um, isolation. When you kick somebody out, you um, ostrac ostrac ostracize people and families, their kids, you know, and yeah, terrible things. But unfortunately, we never went to the, the source that was generating all of these angers and hates and fears and insecurities uh, we just said don't feel this don't be afraid don't separate them don't call them this don't call them that and and the actual sort of monster brewing that was the culprit of all these things happening continued <laughs> to be the resultant of much greater forces that have to do with society because um how we are as a world, as a society, how we are as parents, will result in how we develop sexually. And this is perhaps the most important part of what I try to explain the best I can. That if we see how precious sexuality is, if we understand that sexuality is the result of our environment, just like we know it with animals, don't we? We know it in nature. You know, we know that if a turtle is all of a sudden uh, in the wrong beach, uh, the, the shells of its eggs, uh, it will start maybe making hermaphrodites, and we know that it always goes to sex, the problems of the environment. Uh, um, we know when it comes to science, and we don't have to touch too deeply inside, we can say things like too much male hormones, it seems that are producing gays, yeah, boys that are have a tendency to be the softer of the brothers and and so there's a theory that says if the mother is angry at the father she will not want more boys or whatever how you know and all these sciences are very very interesting and a lot actually a lot more sober and wiser but the massive tumor of air is so big and heavy in our society it's not allowing for the development of and, and bettering of, the, of these sciences. And the most important one is the one that screwed up the worst, which is psychology. Now, psychology started, discovered that one third, I say, I have a, a little diagram that's <coughs> sexuality can be understood in, in, a, in three parts, sociology and culture, psychology and biology. So the part of psychology, um, woke up and because it was so zealously they wanted to be scientists they didn't they missed on something crucial which is that um, if development made nature start sort of lagging behind and all of a sudden you came out and you, you started growing into puberty and, and something was missing and you started looking to continue completing yourself through your same because we we learn from the same gender about ourselves it's very simple this a lot of, of freudian classical um knowledge is right is correct you know we only have two options as babies to learn about ourselves mom and dad that's it and you know all the males and all the females it's not like we learn from donkeys how to be human beings and so <clears throat> Uh, it's very simple to understand that if a father says, well, I don't know about you, I don't know, what, do whatever you want, or uh, don't look at me, or um, go play with your mother, you know, uh, that boy, which is already wired by millions and millions of generations to know that it will find itself and its dad, says, okay, I'll hang out with mom, and I guess guys are don't want me but then there's no way of having that being not bounced back to keep searching for males because something intuitively something inside says wait 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 there's something how come I don't feel stronger about what guys are supposed to think regarding this there's 
Why am I not? Which is totally normal. There's no, you know, people talk about role being, uh, fulfilling a role as if we were actors. We're not actors. We are either men or women. If we're learning from men, it's because we're men and we need to learn how to be good men. We want to be the best men that we can. And so do women want to be the best women that they can? We learn from both. That goes without saying. But as the things that have to do with the things that I uh, understand intuitively, a lot of things were wired. We, we have to trust that. We have to understand that evolution made us perfect in a sense that we have set ways that we're going to go about it, thank goodness, uh, for development to happen. We don't have to rewire the species. We will look to other guys and women, little girls will look to other women to continue learning about their intimate most intuitively, even misunderstood, un, not understood to themselves, parts of their being. So, if, um, if um, social interaction is what resulted in um, parts of the being saying, well, I'm still missing something, I still need to learn more from my dad or my, my older brother that is about to start talking to me and then he takes off, I will continue to um, look for other guys and so and then it turns out that you get to the football field and you're already kind of like not believing in yourself and the guys just make it worse because they don't call you in and say, yeah, come on, it's all right, you know, hey, pass them the ball, you know. Some societies ha are more intuitively wise this way. Sometimes a boy that's shy and doesn't, you know, he will get he will get pulled in by the other boys in the football team in fourth or fifth grade, and they won't be calling him a sissy or anything. They will they will know that just he need that he just needs to, you know, what what the mind knows. We have words we can say he needs to believe in himself a little bit more. But a, a ten year old doesn't know that. He just knows that he's got to believe in himself more. But he doesn't say it. He just feels it. Some cultures are, we have done a lot of damage is what I'm trying to say. We have done a lot of damage in making our societies be a certain way towards ourselves. And we have not allowed what cultures will naturally now. How to go back to that is a whole other, it's a whole other thing. Because, uh, you know, I'm not grabbing a book and saying, okay, let's see what this religion says. Then no, 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 no. Because we are, we've gotten where we have gotten and how we need today's vocabulary to be able to understand what that would mean to become that wealthy intuitively as a culture again, uh, not by following the rules of a book, but anyways. <laughs> I'm losing, hang on. Um, right, okay, so what psychologists didn't understand is that if it all, if whatever was not nurtured enough, let's just say, happened through social interaction, it will be through social interaction, like the examples I was just making, that you will catch up or, you know, speed up that maturity that was lacking behind or uh, discover and develop your self sense of self and own experience will lead you to open doors that will build up that part of you that was cramped in. Uh, thanks to social interaction. So the universally perfect psychologist would say to that boy that came looking to for answers, like saying, what do I do? I really, something feels wrong about homosexuality and I haven't even told my dad. I need to talk to a professional because I believe in a professional. What that psychologist would have done was not take out a racket <laughs> And start and start yeah, hitting him, you know, and to think of your mother, boom, or you know, and all the other stupid things that they've done. They would say, well, then what you need is to not not take it personal if 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 guys are shy or unsecure about unsure about having you join them. Look for people that don't judge you and want to include you. Take you to play ball with them. You know, look, you know, they would, he would have a more socially, humanly comprehensive or, or, or humanly social comprehensive prescription for that person. 
So you, you know, you don't, you don't say, oh, this happened to you because, but your dad is not a bad person. He just didn't know how to, so he would help him heal the relationships that started pushing him down. He would help them help overcome his mom and his dad and not make him feel small before them anymore. But instead he would help him reach and pass, surpass his parents and reach out to his peers so he can catch up. Then he would definitely talk about women all these things are difficult and that's why he should be a professional because uh there's issues that have to do with both sides when uh, a boy let's say starts discovering that he really likes looking at hairy chests and he starts before he bought the whole um the whole social i don't want to be mean and call it propaganda or agenda but before he he about the whole the contemporary uh, narrative of how to solve that before he bought that whole thing um, he uh, has a, a moment where there is freshness still there is still an openness to uh, you know the, the, the younger you reach them the better it is for the mind to naturally so my point is well, first I wanted to say that psychologists should be comfortable in talking and developing both parts. And so pro you probably don't like girls that do this to you, right? You probably like girls that make you feel like they're going to treat you this way. and That makes it easy for you to be yourself and maybe try to make a pass, right? And his patient says, yeah, how did you know that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> And then, well, you know, but with the boys, you feel that... you you're you're different right you don't you don't need to show off with the boys right you, you don't you just kind of uh casually bring your new girl and introduce them because you're not competing or fearing that they're going to take them her from you right and the, the patient says how how did you know that <laughs> you know we need well because i can explain it to you are you interested in psychology <laughs> you know you've never had this kind of situation with mom you know whatever so we are very far from understanding how the species naturally develops and as professionals um i think we made a big mistake in shutting them up and saying no more talk <laughs> no more talk about homosexuality we don't want to get any more intelligent about that no 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 we stop thinking stop thinking call it a civil right and we're done let's move on i definitely think we made a mistake doing that but at the same time we should have been wiser in saying are you succeeding you're not succeeding then you know show me some success before we can endorse you the, the state the, the board of whatever the board of psychologists of north america you know should have said you know you're obviously not really healing the person through the net and so what i'm getting at the natural means that the body is already wired what i'm getting at if is that if we understand the concept as how it makes most sense if that if through social interaction came the um see this is where it gets difficult because if i say trauma everybody goes what do you mean you're calling it a disease i don't know what to, the uh the sculpting <laughs> the sculpting of life <laughs> of the brain then through um through social interaction also the you know the, the re-nourishing and the continued maturing of the brain will speed up again and and you'll catch up to where your particular because everybody's different <laughs> at no point am i saying that we all have to be equally equal males and we all have to go through at least so many women a week no uh i'm saying that nature has a male and a female and they can be expressed very differently one from the other but there's still a male and a female um so uh that means that the mind and the and we have we can actually find evidence we can actually find a proof of this the mind must have a natural means by which to without the psychologist go about in fact when we go and try to make friendship with guys that are gay you know homosexuality in a way is a backdoor an easy <laughs> an easy way to say okay instant male bonding okay <laughs> so except that the part of sexuality is 
been already answered a certain way so it's easy that whole part got bundled up and turned around and then now it's that it's not <laughs> the other way around but uh, in a sense we're still being pulled by what my theory is that there are natural cha there are channels already in place by which maturing and the completion of our nurturing would happen socially socially through um, and you know why I know this because um, I remember um, I remember hit, like wanting to hit on somebody that was uh, that I liked because he wasn't gay he was straight and, and this is something that a lot of quote-unquote gay guys I don't say I don't say gay guys but I'm going to do it just for speed right now um, know about is that they're they're in there attractive precisely because they have something that you see in them that your your soul is calling for you want it that simple you wish it was just you know like that guy who's, who's just a guy you know um, and so they're very but then of course we want to take it the other way <laughs> we want the we want the verification the the essence we want to observe we, what happens is that through sex there's a uh, um, there's a transference there's a transference of that which uh, masculinity and simplicity of belief in this mass male self of that person all of a sudden gets validated in me because I am desired by his wish and by his desire so there's like a transference that happens with but um, and it would happen to me that um, they would see because pro a lot of times it happened because they were they came from another culture they would see right through me they would see <laughs> yeah I know you know what but it's okay no 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 seriously yeah you're funny I know you I know stop trying to grab me you know says the guy let's go let's go you know go ro I don't know go eat a taco or, or, or go fishing or why don't you come with me I have to run some errands you know and, and, and just keep laughing and enjoying my personality and at that moment when I saw that this person really did not condemn me because that's maybe what I was expecting is to hide something that I thought I was hiding that would be condemned instead this person did not condemn me. he still says it you know I like saying I understand that something must have happened to you in your childhood you seem like a cool guy I can see past that I can see around that when I saw that it made me like ashamed and so grateful at the same time I understood that I, it's hard it, they were wonderful experiences that only happened like two or three times in my life but at that moment and it's because my mind was already you know in this kind of thinking otherwise most a lot of guys probably did that and they didn't realize the value of that person that particular person's behavior towards them but in this case because I guess it was his forgiveness his sort of not condemning me and his him loving me anyways as a guy that's what it was he just liked me as a guy I felt that he liked the guy in me um, made me re it released me it released me and because it released me I also felt guilty that I was trying to seduce him in a in a in a cavicious way um, but it was all always forgiven it was always forgiven even I mean I didn't have to explain myself anyways I feel like even today I want to say thank you to those those guys um, because they were like the the confirmation uh, lights um, lighthouses you know along the way of my study of society <laughs> and um, yeah so there is uh no separation now okay let me just conclude it's going to be an hour here to, to fit what happened to us because this this end is going to end up being more about history because that's really the biggest and most tragic actually for the west um uh, aspect of this of this video is that we were making progress in the 50s and unfortunately it doesn't look like psychologists were about to all of a sudden create the sublime therapy uh, not therapy but uh, 
diagnosis of what that person actually needs and all the complexities of social relations that they that psychologist would now have to tend to and find out about so he would know how to guide this person through a social recovery because homosexuality is not about the individual it is about society it is everything about homosexuality is about society it's about how all of us treat the individual but the individual is a result of how all of us treated them and it happens to the species it's not an individual that you know <laughs> stashes it away and brings it uh, hijacks it into existence with him <laughs> to the world and then and then say, ah, look at what I brought with me no 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 homosexuality is always with society it is about the human species and the sexuality of the human species now this may seem lovely and and easy to understand but if you really understand it uh everything that everybody is talking about and and all these uh different magazines and city halls you know <laughs> and uh, polit politicians nothing would have would find none of those discourses would find any footing on this because it means we're all accountable especially especially the guys that were responsible for raising the children which were not necessarily gay most likely not maybe now a few but um oh no i'm not even gonna go there what i'm gonna go <laughs> where i'm gonna go now is at that moment christopher street at that, about that time when america was waking up its psychologists here and there to uh talk about almost like or maybe they had been for some time gradually perhaps increasing or not i don't know for sure but what i'm what i know is that at that very time the the bust and the underground club happened right and people were beat up and violence was occurring people kids were getting you know and uh it's unfortunate that like other stories like the one I just, the, the boy that was tied to, um, out in the countryside, I forget his name now, but they all kind of reinforce the same mistake that we make, that because he was gay, the law has to protect them. That basically avoids and skips understanding homosexuality, right? Now, some may say it's not important to understand it, but it is. It's the most important thing to understand our own sexuality and how homosexuality comes about to the species. But by... Uh, comes about developing, I mean, you know, develops more and with more desire and with desire, develops desire, let's just say, more in some, a lot more in some, and very little in others never got, getting to know its desire that is there latent never discovered um that's why i say it develops more in some than others um instead we said well we're going to do the right things as a politician and we're going to hire more police and we're going to make sure that these guys can continue to party down there without ever getting beat up again so when we did that stonewall and christopher street uh what we did is we turned homosexuality into a civil right which means a civil right a civil right is something that you may acquire or not acquire as a human being you may be born in america and you have the right to be an american or you may be born somewhere else or it is absolutely unchangeable like being of a, a racial make a racial appearance now is it a civil right to be uh, American of African descent no <laughs> how can it be a civil right you are is it a civil right to be of Japanese uh, ethnic racial or origins no now what is a civil right is for Americans of African descent or Japanese people of African ancestry to not uh, be harassed. In other words, to, to not be deprived of anything that a citizen of the country protected by the law is uh, entitled to, not deprived from, right? But when what happened was with, with homosexuality, 
we kind of went through the same. We went, uh, you know, somebody that because he's gay is not deprived of any civil rights. Because he is gay. This is, this is, was establishing that the person was born that way. And what happens? when we established that the person is born because then we we made sure it stayed that way we said it's not a choice you know what the funny part is is that it is a choice it's a different kind of choice it's not a choice that we can voluntarily make like breathing we have to breathe <laughs> but breathing is a choice I get, look make me breathe you won't be able to you can wait and wait and wait and wait and eventually I will breathe because I have to breathe but not because you tell me because I have to right so breathing is a choice homosexuality is a choice it's but we have to understand the 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 strength and the complexity that comes behind it and we have been ignorant for all of human history about this we have not known, we have only known that half of us, half of each one of us, or half of the population, which is the same, is, mm, not, I don't know. And that is natural. That is, that is how the species stays together. We evolve to not really run towards homosexuality. There's something naturally that uh, creates aversion towards homosexuality precisely because it's naturally possible. Because it's naturally possible, the species evolved an aversion to it. So both are true. We have now to understand why it is also pleasurable. See, all this doesn't fit in the, in the, in the, in the diagram of either or because it's a, a three-dimensional both are true our cultural society is not beholding of the intelligence of both are true they, we have split it up cut it up chopped it up and split society and we're actually creating a separation <laughs> and we're introducing a new separation to society <laughs> and we, in the name of non-segregation we're creating a segregation we're saying some men are no nobody is is or is not so this nobody is or is not is understood when you understand that homosexuality is simultaneously both why is it attractive impossible and you can find love and da 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 da, da and uh, feels comfortable and desire is able to feel rewarding is able to become the feeling of satisfaction and rewarding why does it have this capacity and at the same time it carries with it aversion even guys that have only known homosexuality did not lose they learn we teach ourselves they did not lose that part that is misgiving of aversion we just train ourselves socially and culturally to learn how to have sex to believe of ourselves this way and so that part of homosexuality which is saying also hey wait 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 don't get so carried away i'm not this is not where we want to go gets quieted and pushed far back that's all that we've done basically that's what we've done we've educated ourselves to manage it a certain way now what's interesting is why is it um why is it capable of being attractive and uh, satisfying, rewarding, lustful, love, complimentation. There is, I'm always thinking of guys, I mean, I'd be perfect if I could make women and male references all the time. I'm hoping one day I will meet a girl that will help me write a book and do the lesbian version of me and we can put it together into a great book <laughs> that is told by both perspectives the guy and the girl of what i'm talking about from the same perspective that i'm another one in other words that has come to see that which for a girl i'm guessing would be a lot easier right <laughs> would be a lot easier to see this simultaneously three-dimensional thing but perhaps in today's western woman what would be difficult to find in a girl is a girl that has it clear as they say in spanish that it's not really maybe even that is actually easier for a girl to understand it's not the optimal expression of your life that 
you would prescribe for anybody and everybody <coughs> or for yourself or anyone but anyways I'm okay uh, before the oh, I'm gonna pass the hour uh, but anyways I promise I'll I'm cutting I'm coming to a close here um, because sexuality I'm going to talk it even though okay homosexuality is contained it's like a smaller circle with that within the bigger circle of human sexuality in all of us but I'm only going to refer to homosexuality because the difference with homosexuality uh, is nothing to do with babies here um, I'm not even going there I'm not even going there you might be able to deduce what I believe but I'm not even coming close to that but the difference has nothing to do with the raising or making babies or not the difference with homosexuality to uh, its encompasser <laughs> the greater uh, sexuality is that um, homosexuality has both forces so it's like it's like if you can split a circle in black and white and then you put that circle that split circle in black and white inside a full colored circle so it is universalizing in the sense that this happens in all of us but as far as the difference with sexuality is that sexuality has a linear you know linear purpose I'm gonna explain something have patience um, men and women you know for babies this is a greater homosexuality uh, uh, design evolved by natural creation right um, now in <laughs> it's kind of I haven't really nailed it but um, homosexuality has a difference that because it is by definition the human sexual experience of both of the same gender it creates automatically without us being able to do anything about it other than educate ourselves to ignore it you know will produce the aversion because as the whole of, of sexuality is designed we are we feel everything flows natural with it doesn't matter if you the, the first uh, shyness of the first time you go look for a girl or the you know the fear of children as they change and then all of a sudden all they want to do is talk about girls and then they become shy again and all these faces of back and forth is irrelevant that is all within a great single directional linear integral um, singularity of, of two genders while within the possibility of human sexuality homosexuality immediately creates uh, a 50% that is an aversion or something that wait no no this doesn't fit that way why does it work though why does it work and that's what I want to explain why does it still kind of Whoop, somehow we did it anyways we we did all the same things and we started moving the same way and we started touching and loving and feeling and acting funny afterwards we did all the same stuff that can happen during during sexuality because <clears throat> there is in homosexuality and I don't want to confuse me but I want to say that the same is in sexuality but I guess it, it would be the same I'm just not gonna go there I think it is the same a little different there are three sectors one sector three three general areas that we can understand as having as, as being the nurturing influences of development and, and social social creation of our sexuality by the way uh, sexuality is not divided into homosexual sexuality and human sexuality is only one sexuality which is human sexuality human sexuality happens to be able to express homosexuality but it is not asexuality okay um, da -da 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 -da. right so the three sectors are 
um, sociological cultural meaning mainly after as soon as we take to the streets as soon as we start going to school and making little friends especially as we grow older adolescents everything that we learn because we are everything we become is what we learn from the world we read and hear uh, through culture and, so, and so social interaction sociology you know what this result what that kind of behavior results in and what they're saying do they approve it do, is it applauded is it friend it frowned upon everything there is sociology and psycho site no sociology and culture right psychology which is inner which means how I express sexuality through stuff that has to do with what happened inside me given social forces cultural forces so uh, in things I learned study uh, and needs also that come from the outside but still produce from within natural psychology and psychology that has to do with uh, maybe not having a father that made me feel that I was a guy or maybe having a mother that uh, didn't convince me that women feel happy about me loving them you know um, whatever resulted in the psychological affliction on sexuality that it got expressed through homosexuality together fused with natural psychology which is um you know uh, a guy likes feeling like a guy after he finished you know after he got his babe and he, he, he pleased her and everything you'll find that whether you are a, a screaming <laughs> screaming queen and just had a, a sex with a woman and she came and is all like rosy looking at you you will feel the same masculine whoa I feel like you know I've, I was meant to I was I have a purpose now <laughs> you know that is not uh, commensurate with the sides of the psychology in your homosexuality that may have to do with things that were more uh, stronger protagonists and you feeling rewarded and needing uh, homosexuality and then the third part is <laughs> forget me don't feel me now okay the third part is um, uh, biology and this is the interesting part chemistry and biology chemistry you know like you touch my skin all of a sudden the hormones start running whoops what happened there yeah okay all that part of sexuality and homosexuality guess what it doesn't really see gender differentiation so much that's why a guy can get you hard by, by stroking you because it doesn't matter what you do as long as you you know and so what happens these three sectors the chemical biological psychological and sociological cultural are all together they formed what I am sexually homosexually and they were there all along the development of homosexuality so if we want to explain and talk like we know what we're talking about <laughs> to others in magazines as politicians um sorry barack <laughs> but oh well you did the best you could um we would know given the country the times no i'm, I'm I mean no disrespect absolutely um, given what society teaches us up to the point that we've arrived right um, what am I getting at oh we would be able to explain everybody by their life's experiences in these three areas <laughs> so in other words we should be a lot more not so excited about thinking we know what we're talking about when we talk about homosexuality somebody else's homosexuality we should be not so quick to rush and say to somebody who says I don't like it I, I it makes me angry that they're doing it in front of my child we shouldn't be so quick to judge and call that person a homophobe you know or anything because to really be truthful in our understanding about each and every individual and society we should be versed about that person's life and I guess as society is an expression 
is a large-scale expression of every individual um, all three areas so we should be able to first of all not blame them if they wanted if it felt good and they couldn't help you know letting themselves get <laughs> you know something they wouldn't do in public by another guy uh, we should understand that also they were in a society that was only gays were partying and throwing parades and if you dared say that I'm gonna make sure that my little boy grows up to be a, a ladies man and sure of himself confident and a go-getter you start going into territory that you might get thrown a shoe at your head versus growing up in a society where the opposite is true uh, you know where all you hear is hang them hang them if they if you see them look sweetly at another guy and kill them and so you know, so you got to be understanding sociologically culturally about that person depending on where they were <laughs> so you have to be able to to know that person's life and psychologically even worse how do you know what what why they learned that it hurts them to continue living homosexually how do you know what it makes them feel after so many years of homosexuality inside psychologically about themselves you don't that's one of the sectors or how do you know why they find it so easy and they don't suffer it at all because they're so confident as males they can fool around with a guy every once in a while and they still don't lose it they still uh, because they see sexuality in such I, mean, I met people like that that they're so confident especially males they're so confident sexually that boys are like toys and women are better toys you know <laughs> they don't they don't ever you know uh but that that, that happens usually in, in healthier societies not in our society so much about sexuality um anyways so there you go and that's my presentation for this evening I really appreciate thanks for everybody who bared all the way along um, because I know it's an hour no <laughs> there's, two, there's two people that that saw this I'll be amazed um, and yeah it's I don't know what else to say it's it's all there oh yeah if you know of that girl that wants to collaborate with me send her out you know email all that stuff like <laughs> like and comment no, <laughs> ring the bell. <laughs> ring the bell. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> no, seriously, because I think that would be an awesome book, and we could we could really make a lot of money. We could. <laughs> if we write it well. Oh yeah, this would sweep sweep the world. We'd bring peace between Islam and the West. That's how great it would be. So, but you know have to be my matching my matching half so well then there would be a lot of uh, convincing to do in, in the East I'm sure have a good night